So, uh, we got some new songs I'd like to play for you tonight, as well as some old ones. Yeah! Mm -hmm. This is, uh, and the boy some bourbon. This is a, this is a song, wrote this with Roselle. Roselle couldn't be here to uh, this rendezvous. Uh, Karen Pickett and I ordered him to stay home. <laughs> and mind the fort. Yeah, you may have noticed that there's there's no there's no confounders. <laughs> So Mike Rozelle wrote this song with me and uh, <laughs> I want to dedicate it to all the, uh, well, <laughs> Mike and I kind of figured this is almost the perfect Earth First song because it mentions monkey wrenching and t-shirts and bumper stickers and Ed Abbey and jail and Jesus and pickup trucks and Judy Barry and Bill Oliver. Yeah. Well, what about the guy that couldn't get out the log truck? Yeah, he looked a whole lot like Jesus. Yeah, he looked just like the Lord. Long hair on his head, his neck it was red, and he was driving an old beat up Ford. His tailgate was covered with stickers. Love your mother and blow up a dam. Make love, not war. Don't drill oil offshore and get livestock off our public land. He was smoking a humble hooter. Oh Lord, it tasted divine. So I asked him what gives. He just said, Hey, do lives and it Lot like Jesus, he looked just like the Lord. Long hair on his head, his neck it was red, and he was driving an old beat up Ford. He had a green fist on his t shirt. In his ear, he spoke of the trees and he cursed corporate sleaze while he guzzled the six pack of beer. So, as we entered the national forest, I wondered what we's gonna do. He said, I'm a gone monkey wrenching. Sharing my cell Cause he was 
was a spy for the FBI, and he busted day for me. do one more song but before I do I'd like to just talk a little bit about the bombing case because uh, everybody keeps coming up and asking me the same darn questions and I'm starting to get a little hoarse so just just a couple quick details first of all the Oakland police are making a whole big deal about a bunch of nails that they say match some nails match the nails that were attached to the bomb that were in Judy's house but the fact of the matter is is that nobody has any nail injuries to start with there was no scrap nail no scrap nail at all that hit anybody so we don't know what all this big deal about nails is about. Secondly, they say that it came from a batch. They matched the two nails from her house and the nails that supposedly were on the bomb. It came from a batch of 200. Million. What? Is that all? 200, that's right. These nails were carefully handcrafted <laughs> in Taiwan. <laughs> and Judy bought all of them. Secondly, they just announced the other day that, oh well, the bomb wasn't in plain view, which was the reason we were supposedly considered suspects in the first place. No, the bomb wasn't in plain view, what they said it was. It was hidden under the seat. Now, the Lord's Avenger, or as I like to think of them, the Dark Lord's Avenger, the Lord's Avenger. The Lord's Avenger. Tell you, Daryl. Well, there's some pretty funny things about the Lord's Avenger, too. For example, the Lord's Avenger said that he put the bomb in Judy's car while she was having a meeting with the loggers. Now, uh, if that's correct, that would have been sometime in the afternoon or evening in Willits. And yet, none of the loggers or the environmentalists who were there at that meeting were questioned or have been questioned by the Oakland police or the FBI. So if they take this Lord's Avenger seriously, how come they aren't questioning the possible eyewitnesses that might have seen who this person claims to be? Because he says he was there at a particular time. Because they did it! Because they bombed you! Fuck the FBI! 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 Fuck the FBI. In any case, Judy Barry just got out of the hospital on Thursday. She's currently in a rehabilitation. She's, real, she's in a rehab place where she's going to learn how to try to walk on her leg, which has very serious nerve damage to it. It's really doubtful that she'll ever walk the same again. If she'll be able to walk without a brace is still a matter of conjecture. However, she was out of traction two weeks early. And we could tell that as we were doing Redwood Summer and Judy was kind of sending messengers up with uh, commands from, from the bedside, we could actually feel her bones fusing together as we were up north. 
However, despite her rapid healing pro progress, she is still in pain, excruciating pain, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And she has a crushed coccyx and a crushed sacrum, which are just the tailbone and just above that. And they're just going to have to fuse the way that they do. There's no, nothing the doctors can really do about that. Her, her, co her, her coccyx and her sacrum are crushed into oatmeal. And the car seat springs went right up through her butt to her bone. And uh, those are also some very serious injuries that were not able to be dealt with until she was out of traction. In any case, um, we have a feeling that we, we have a pretty good idea who did this. There's some white Aryan logger and a abortionist scum who live in Fort Bragg. The, uh, we also understand that the Maxam company has just announced that their new security force is composed of ex-CIA agents. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> but uh, as far as uh, Ju Judy made a quip to the press the other day, she says, you know, she says they bombed the wrong end of me. <laughs> because she's still alive and she's still thinking and she's still strategizing. She's got a, she's still talking. She's got a phone now, so God help us all. <laughs> song now. It's a song that Judy Barry wrote along with me one night. The Lord's Avenger claimed to have heard this song. If you're out there, L.A., I'd like you to hear it again. Because you know what's going to happen if the Lord's Avenger kills me or Judy? This song is going to be number one for the eternity. <laughs>
old Bill Staley hated abortion. Sorry, I'm trying to hear. Now old Bill Staley went to the clinic, said he was gonna rape the boss. like to remind you all that um, okay the fact that the uh, the FBI and the OPD are not looking for uh, whoever did this is sending the green light to all would-be assassins of environmentalists that it's okay to go out and kill us because not only will you not be looked for in case you do but if you fail in your mission the OPD and the FBI will finish the job for you that's what's happening right now and I'd like to tell you one more thing about why this is happening before we go this November, there's a ballot initiative called the Forest Forever Initiative. It's statewide. It goes throughout California. It will ban clear cutting. It will give the state first option to buy old growth, and it will provide the money to do it with. And it will also force the timber companies into sustained growth forestry. This may not be an Earth First initiative, but it is definitely a very major step in the right direction. Now, the timber industry has just wants to connect the people who wrote the Forest Forever Initiative, they want to make everybody think that they are bombers. And recently, in fact, just as I came here on Thursday, I learned that when I got to Missoula that the industry had filed their counter-argument to our initiative, and that counter-argument said this. This, is, this goes out to every registered voter in the state of California if the Secretary of State approves it. So you've got to remember that there's 15 or 20 million people who are going to get this if it gets past the Secretary of State. And the counter-argument to our initiative said this. The Forest Forever Initiative is sponsored by Earth First. Earth First is a terrorist organization. Earth First spokesperson Daryl Cherney said on 60 Minutes that he advocated strapping bombs to the terminally ill and having them blow up power plants and dams. Currently, there are four, it went on to say that there are four Earth Firsters who are indicted in Arizona for blowing up power stations, and this is why you should not vote for the Forest Forever Initiative. These folks are serious. So here's what I'm trying to tell you. What I'm trying to say is that the reason that the cloud of suspicion has to focus on Judy and myself is because whoever the cloud of suspicion falls over will win or lose the election. For example, if it falls over the environmental community that we are bombers, we could lose the election. If it falls over the timber industry, we'll win in a landslide. There are billions and billions of dollars at stake this November. And we cannot allow the timber industry to force the responsibility upon us when we know damn right well who did it. It was Max Ann, Georgia Pacific, and Louisiana Pacific. That's who did it. Yeah. 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 So, 
please come to Redwood Summer. We will not back down to terrorism. We won't back down to terrorism to the environment, and we will not back down to terrorism to ourselves. We will stand tall, proud, and true, and if they want to shoot us, they will shoot us down in front of a redwood tree, or in front of a virgin desert, or in front of the Arctic tundra, or in front of the ocean, but we will always stand for what we stand on, Earth first.